I am Andy's. Okay, I hope this is recording. Some of my new podcast equipment arrived, and there are lights and buttons, and none of that is important. If you were listening to the previous episode, you know things got insane. I feel weird even saying it out loud, but I was talking to a character on the show. I'd have thought I lost my mind entirely, except I had my housemate Tiff listen to what I recorded, and she totally heard me talking to that new character in sickbay. Of course, Tiff thinks it's all an elaborate joke I did to mess with her, but she heard it. She heard it. And so did you guys. I got a lot of emails from you. And of course, you think this is all further proof that I'm faking this whole podcast. After some soul searching and a lot of ice cream, I realized if I was in your shoes, I'd think the same thing. But guys, I promise, this is real. I don't even know how to describe to you what I'm feeling right now. I really wish I had the support of the Mandy community, but like I said, I get why you think this is fake. I've been trying to figure out how to prove it to you without showing the video, and I have an idea. Get this. I'm asking, in the presence of all you awesome Space Panis fans, oh, what am I doing? I am asking Mr. Infinity to view the next episode with me. Like, in the same physical location. Mr. Infinity, if you're out there, and I know you're out there, always, always out there, contact me. Let's set up a meet on neutral ground. You're my biggest enemy, so if you vouch for me in this, then I'm golden. All right, that's done. I've said it. (sighs) On to the show. No idea what's going to happen with this weird new character who can, uh, hear me. No idea. Somewhere. In the deepest depths of space, a team of intergalactic efficiency experts comb the galaxy, looking to bring order to the chaos of the universe. It takes a team of doers. No one set up any sparks. Thinkers. My sick bay is for science. Lovers. I think I have the right wires. And fighters. How much blood do you need? It takes us. Don't forget computers. Right. That too. And me, I'm their leader, Captain Joe. And I am proud to be captain of the Space Mantis. Crew, everyone is to report to the dining area ASAP for a meeting with Captain Joe. Repeat, everyone is to report to the dining area ASAP for a meeting with Captain Joe. Nancy, can I wait a few minutes? I'm almost done searching my bunk for hidden cameras. Stupid spying Braithwaite. He had so better not have any cameras in my bunk. You hear me, Braithwaite? You slimy, sad, little peeping Tom. Captain Joe said ASAP, Zed. ASAP means as soon as possible, not as soon as is convenient for you. That would be a markedly more cumbersome acronym. ASAIC. Shut up. I get it. Fine, I'm coming. You'd think finding hidden cameras might take precedence here, though. This is so stupid. Stupid, stupid Braithwaite. We're all gonna... Zed, wait up. Oh, hey, Doc. Searching your bunk for cameras? Yep. Me too, man. Creepy stuff. Totally. Shh, hear that? (laughs) <laughs> Sounds like Marcus is gutting his room. <laughs> oh man, he's got to be so stressed. Mr. Love him and leave him would not want recordings of his bunk circulating around Galaxy Cam. I've never been happier to be boring. Those Galaxy Cam freaks would have no interest in watching me when they've got the likes of Marcus. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, nothing. You got some dark secret? Dress up in a glittery pinafore and tap dance in the dead of night? 
Do dramatic readings of cheap romance novels? Oh, don't give me that look. Seriously, though, do you have a reason to be concerned? Yeah, not really, I guess. Not exactly. It's just that I... Well, I talk to myself. A lot. And the things I say... Well, let's just say I'd hate for Joe to hear what I say behind his back. Out of context. Ah, I getcha. Acting out what it'd be like to give Joe a piece of your mind. Uh, it's more... Mutinous than that. What? You plot mutiny in your free time? Geez, Zed, some friend you are. Not for real. Just in my imagination. But... Guys, look what I found. Whoa, is that? That's a camera, right? Looks like. Oh, totally. Way to go, Marcus. Nothing like motivation to get the job done, eh? What are you talking about? Nothing, nothing. Okay, well, here we are. Let's do this meeting. I'm pausing this for just a second so I can set the scene for you. Joe's standing there at the head of the table with a stack of printouts in his hands. There are these blocky purple letters hovering in the air saying, Let's get Braithwaite, a brainstorming session. Infinity in dude form is standing beside Joe, and their hands are both on the controls for the PowerPoint thing. Looks like Infinity was just in the middle of showing Joe how to use it. Infinity pats Joe on the hand and nods encouragingly. Hey, guys. Have a seat. Have a seat. Thanks for coming. Captain, I found this. Look. Oh, wow. That's a teeny little camera. It was in my bunk. Aw, oh, man. Cameras and bunks. <sighs> Tell me about it. Dude, I mean... I have night terrors with Braithwaite as the main character. I sure hope I don't talk in my sleep, or he's going to have all sorts of ammo for more crazy messages. Captain, shh. <clears throat> oh, right, right. Um, okay, I've got these uh, printouts so you can follow along with my presentation. And you can put notes in the margins, see? I made the margins nice and big so you have writing space. Cool? Okay. Good. Any questions before I get going? Yeah. How long is this going to be? Not too long. Sure. That's what you said about the team building presentation you did to try and make us behave before those central inspectors came through. Doc, shut your pie hole and listen. Intelligent questions are, of course, welcome. But keep that sass to yourself, guys, or we're never going to get out of here. Incidentally, I'm pretty sure it was Sass that made that team-building presentation so long anyway. <clears throat> <clears throat> right. Okay, so let's get Braithwaite. A brainstorming session. First step. How and when to gain access to the dodecahedron of doom. I'm thinking it'd be best if we go in from the side, but not just any side. If you turn to Appendix 17 Alpha, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, this is a diagram that I drew based on what I think the dodecahedron looks like. And this isn't just any dodecahedron, mind you. This is the Doom dodecahedron. Okay, so right now, Joe's droning on in this blurry blah 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 sort of voice. In the background and the cameras zooming in on the printout in Marcus's hands. The font's crazy tiny, so the camera has to really zoom in big time. Let me pause this so I can read. Oh, fun, fun. Okay, so the first sentence says, This presentation is totally fake, guys. I'm saying a bunch of garbage to throw Braithwaite off the trail. Everything you need to know about our upcoming mission is in the following pages of this printout. Bring it back to your cabins tonight and acquaint yourselves with what we're really going to do. Right now, ask some stupid questions and draw some pretty doodles in the margins. Oh, Joe, so clever. 
Except if the studio's cameras can zoom in and read that sheet, then Pearl's cameras she's got scattered around the mantis can do it too, but whatever. Also, not that I even want to go there, but is it even the studio's cameras at all? Or is this really space? I mean, that lady totally talked to me and... Nope. Denial. Sweet denial. Besides, we need to see what happens next, so back to the presentation. Okay, pressing play again. Ah, shoot. We're not in the dining room anymore. We're in the sick bay, and there's the mystery lady. Quit talking about me like I'm not here, voice. You're really driving me nuts. Um, sorry? Who are you even talking to, anyway? My, uh, podcast? Audience? Podcast? What podcast? Um, it's called Unreleased Space Mantis. Ha! Proof you're fake. Huh? I'm like a Space Mantis mega fan, dude. I know all the Mantis podcasts, and I have never heard of that one. Uh, that's because it's brand new. And hold on a second. Back the trolley up. You know Space Mantis? The show? Duh. How? You're on it. How can you have the ability to watch it? And how are you talking to me? Oh, and... I have no idea at all. And frankly, I don't care about your questions right now. What about my questions? How are you talking to me? Why does the cast freeze when you talk to me? Why am I on this ship? How am I in space? Ow. Okay, okay. Chill. Yeah. We both have questions, tons of questions, and no answers, not a one of them. So maybe we just set them aside for now and... Easy for you to say. You're not riding around in space in a fictional spacecraft. Clearly not so fictional. Well, sure, unless I'm completely and utterly insane. I'm probably in an asylum somewhere, in a straitjacket, in a coma... Oh man, hopefully I'm in an asylum. What if I'm unconscious, laying in the swamp somewhere? Stop flipping out, dude. Look, for what it's worth, I saw you in a swamp, and then I saw Captain Joe carry you out of the swamp and onto the ship. As far as I can see, you're totally, really there and sane. Says the voice in my head. Okay. You do see we're talking around in circles, right? I guess. But, you know, if I were in your shoes, I'd be less focused on how I was where I was and a lot more focused on exploring as much of the mantis as I could and talking to the crew and having a ton of fun. I mean, you're on the space mantis. Go exploring. I'm sort of strapped to the table here. Well then, want my advice? Sure. Stop acting insane when Angela comes to see you next. They think you're on a top secret mission from Central. Play it up. Be mysterious and vague and make references to old episodes as proof that you are from Central and that you know a lot of things. And if you're as much of a mega fan as you say you are, you can totally do this and have a ton of fun in the process. Just as long as you can act sane enough to get Angela to let you off the table. Oh, and you should probably stop talking to me because Nancy is going to hear you and think you're still crazy. Shh. Dude, I see Angela. She's right outside the door. Don't talk. Whenever you talk, they... Yeah, yeah. Everyone freezes, I know. Okay, my lips are sealed. How you feeling, crazy lady? Um, pretty good, I guess. Pretty good. Give me your arm. Oh good, injection spot's looking okay. That round of vaccines, some people have been getting a funny rash. Okay, you feeling good enough to answer some questions? Captain Joe would like a word with you if you're up to it. And while we wait for him, I have a few questions myself. Um, okay. Okay, for starters, let's assume you're really from Central for now. 
Why'd they have you all the way the hell out here on this stupid little planet? I mean, Nancy says these life forms are so backwards they don't even have space travel capabilities. Hey, they've done space travel. Nancy, is she right? Technically, she is correct, but only on the very smaller scale possible. I did not deem it worth mentioning when you asked whether they were capable of space travel. They have orbited their planet and gone as far as their moon. Aw, adorable little life forms, aren't they? Dipping their toes in the shallow end. Dude, you gotta start somewhere. True enough. Maybe in about a thousand years they'll be able to join the Alliance. Hey, they're pretty smart. They're, uh, just focusing on their own planet right now. Geez, why so defensive? Uh, I don't know. I've been there a long time. Bonded with the locals, I guess. Whatever. Which brings me back to my question. Why are you here? Yeah, my question exactly, kid. Central's official line is this galaxy's not worth a look. Either you're so super high level, like so high level you're in the realm of secret central goings on, and they won't even officially say you're up to anything, or you're a super low level, or I guess you're a criminal or something, and they stuck you out here to make you disappear. Which one is it? Um, the first one. Definitely the first one. I am way high in Central. Hmm. So who do you work with? Like, who can I contact to confirm your story? Oh, dang. She's got a stupid blank look on her face right now. She's totally going to mess this up. Guys, did I not just tell her like two minutes ago to play up the Mysterious Central thing? How hard can that be if you're really a fan? If I was in her place, I'd totally... Oh, now her eyes twitching and she's looking mad. Remember, lady, don't Talk to me. Just listen, okay? You gotta say something about how you can't divulge information about who you work with. You gotta just stick to that. Otherwise, you're in mega trouble. Or, oh, oh, I got it. Say you were dealing exclusively with that spy dude, Captain Brio. See, because he was crazy high level at Central and he died halfway through last season. Say he recruited you out of school and you only ever dealt with him. That sounds totally legit, yeah? And be super horrified when they say he's dead. Okay, done talking. Well, give me some names. Who can I contact to confirm that you're with Central? Captain Brio. <clears throat> um, yeah. Anyone else? Nope, just him. You know, I shouldn't be telling you this, but he recruited me right out of school for this high-level spy position. See, he needed a spunky teen to keep an eye on... stuff. In this evil sorority where Braithwaite was recruiting promising young lady scientists. See, his advisors told him his approval rating was slipping because his staff was overwhelmingly male. So, yeah. Cool! That sounds legit. Unstrapper, Doc. Joe, you serious? Sure. I mean, Braithwaite totally had, like, two women on his payroll, until a few years back. And Brio does recruit spies that way. It's his thing. He doesn't want them knowing anything about chain of command or having any other names to divulge in case they get captured and interrogated, like right now. So her lack of information is good. Yep. Except if she was spying on a sorority on... Where did you say that sorority was? Um, dude, say Star Squad U, Braithwaite's alma mater. Star Squad University. Give me the name of one of the ladies you were spying on. Pearl! Pearl! She's on Braithwaite's staff right now. Pearl. Sure. Nancy? Yes, Captain? Did Braithwaite hire a woman named Pearl from uh, Star Squad U? One moment. Processing. Yes, Paul Higgins, computer engineer. Thanks, Nancy. See, Doc? Okay, well, if she was spying on a sorority, then how the hell'd she get out here? Good point. Well, obviously. The sorority gig is over. This was my next assignment. I did such a good job with the sorority thing that when this thing came up, I got the job. Scoping out this planet for Brio. Can't you just contact him and have him confirm it? Er, uh, well, about that. I hate to break it to you, kid, but... Brio's dead. No, 
Yep. But no. Sorry. Well, wow. Wow. Geez, I guess that's why he stopped contacting me. Yep. Dang. Uh, if you think about it, kid, it was insanely lucky for you that we fell onto this rock. I mean, with Brio dead and being the only one who knew you were here, you'd have been stuck here for the rest of your life. If we hadn't crash-landed on your doorstep. Wow. Yeah. Something about this feels super off. I mean, that is a super huge coincidence. Doc, uh, can I talk to you in, in the hall? Sure. Are you guys ever going to unstrap me? Shut your trap. We'll be right back. <laughs> Doc, come on. How stupid do you think I am? You really want me to answer that, Captain? Yeah, not so much. Anyway, Doc, of course her story's suspicious. Of course it's full of holes. But what are we going to do? Torture her to get answers? She hasn't done anything so far, but maybe lie. Maybe. But also, maybe she's telling the truth. With Brio dead, there's no way of knowing. Maybe it's all just a huge coincidence that we found her. We'll just have Nancy watch her like a hawk and report to me everything she does. Kid's not going to be able to make a suspicious move without me knowing. Nancy's the best. Anyway, if this lady does anything weird, then we get real with the questioning. Until then, let's just play along. We got to deal with Braithwaite. We don't have time for this. Oh, dude, Joe, idea. Nancy said there was a record of Braithwaite hiring that Pearl lady. If this mystery lady really was in Pearl sorority, well... Just... Excellent idea, Doc. Excellent. Dang it. Now the camera's zooming away from the mantis and zipping through space, and I have a pretty good idea where it's going, and yep, dodecahedron of doom. It's zipping through a window and over to a desk where Pearl and Braithwaite are staring at a computer monitor. You recognize that chick? Was she for real in your sorority? Uh, I don't know. She's not familiar, but I was totally wasted, like, constantly my last year there. Maybe she was new that year? Got any old pals you can ask? We gotta confirm this. Oh, I do, I gotta. Those girls were such a bunch of backstabbing jerks. I swear, they totally hate me. Why? They're just super petty. I mean, geez. All I did was seduce a few of their boyfriends. Wasn't I really doing them a favor? If a dude's gonna cheat on you with your sorority sister, do you really want the dude anyway? Pearl, it is logic like that that makes me proud to have you in my employ. Thanks, boss. But for realsies, we do need to confirm that that chick was in your sorority. Oh, I can check my yearbook. Sweet. Go get it. It's in storage down in level C. Might take a while. No worries. Get moving. Well, crap. That's not good. So Pearl walks off and Braithwaite leans down and looks at the monitor. He starts hitting some keys and looking at different shots of the mantis. Okay, he stops flipping through and starts listening in on a conversation Zed and Marcus are having by the bridge by the control panel. Marcus, you gotta pay attention. I'm sorry, I'm trying. It's just so hard when you keep yelling at me. I don't do well under pressure. You need to do well under pressure, moron. Zed, stop it. Dude. Are you crying? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> oh, damn it, man. Joe says I gotta teach you, so I'm gonna teach you. But I can shovel every bit of mantis-related information into that brain of yours, and it's not gonna do a lick of good if you don't learn it. So, for the last time, this blue wire plugs into... Uh, um... There? No! No! You moron! Idiot! Poor Marcus. Zed would be such a crappy professor. Okay, we're zooming back over to Braithwaite now. He's chuckling while he watches Zed and Marcus fighting. And then in walks Pearl with a big book in her hands. Got it. Look, here's my sorority. I flipped through it on the way up here and she is totally not pictured. See? Ha! She's totally a fake. She's lying to them. 
But why? And how does she know all of this stuff? Well, she's probably a fake. How do you mean? See here, under all the pictures? Not pictured. Clementine Cashore. If this chick's name's Clementine Cashore, then she's legit. Has she said her name yet? I don't remember her saying her name. I haven't heard it yet. Huh. Joe is one crappy questioner. Well, they'll get to it eventually. Probably. Shh, look. They're back in the sick bay. And we're zooming back to the mantis. Hey, lady, remember, don't talk to me. Okay, you're potentially in a heap of trouble. I just heard a bunch of stuff over the dodecahedron of doom. Don't worry about it. But I think I got something that's going to help. Your name is Clementine Cashore. Or at least, that was your cover name at the sorority. I'll explain later, okay? Oh, and also, Joe's got Nancy spying on you, like, every second. So, no more talking to me, and no more doing anything remotely weird or suspicious. Nod once if you understand. Okay, she nodded, guys. And she doesn't even look all that overwhelmed. Wow. Okay, I'm done talking. You do your thing, Clementine. Okay, kid, the Doc and I have worked out a plan. Right, Doc? Yep. But before we tell you, what's your name? This kid thing just not working. <clears throat> Clementine. Clementine Cashel. Okay, Clementine. Now, we have a plan, but for uh, reasons, we can't speak those plans aloud. So I'm going to whisper in your ear now, real quiet. Just wanted to warn you first so you don't get creeped out. Got it? Wow. Uh, yeah? But, uh, I mean, do you really think I can do all that? Sure. If you really were one of Brio's spies, this should be a piece of cake. Oh, right. Right you are, Dr. Angela. Yeah, I'm just a bit rusty from being out on this silly old planet for so long. But yeah, I can totally do this plan. No problem. So, uh, when do we do this thing? Just as soon as Zed has the ship patched up. So we should be out of here in a few hours. A few hours? Isn't that a problem? Nope. Nope. No problem at all. Nope. Uh-uh. Good. Okay. So, if I'm gonna do this thing, I need to be unstrapped, yes? On it. There you go. Freedom. Thanks, Doc. Okay, then. You go on over to the pods. We'll send Zed to meet you. He can walk you through the controls. It'll probably be similar to whatever you used to fly on this planet. So you'll catch on fast enough. Yeah, sure. Oh, wow. She looks mega freaked. Poor thing. Yikes. Though, FYI, guys, I could totally do it, no problem, if I was in her shoes. I sure hope she's played that simulator they have up on the Fly Mantis website. I got ace pilot level. My top score is actually on the leaderboard now, number four at some point, though some super losers with no life have since pushed me down to number eight. Anywho, she's walking out of the sick bay like she's condemned to death, which hopefully she isn't. And now we're going back over to the dodecahedron of doom. Braithwaite and Pearl are still staring at the screen. Ooh, are they sending her here? I bet they are. They're having her fly over here to pretend to be pals with you while she spies on us. I think you're right. <laughs> awesome. This should be fun. So fun. Tons of fun. Super fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot. This weird lady is going to do something she's totally not prepared for. This is the worst. I hope she doesn't get killed, dudes, since apparently she's a real person and this isn't a set and it's all really happening. Which reminds me, Mr. Infinity, please get back to me soon and let me know the time and the place. We will meet up, you will observe the DVDs, you will sit in on the episode, and you will vouch for me thus giving the internet the proof it needs to believe this isn't all just an elaborate scheme of mine to get podcast listeners. Right. Until then, fellow Mandys, over and out. Hi, 
I'm Laura Morrison, the creator of the Space Mantis podcast. And by listening, the subsonic frequencies from this broadcast have just cleared your brain of space parasites. What? No, you're crazy. What were we talking about? Not space brain parasites, that's for sure. This episode featured Jennifer Flath as the narrator, Sam Hooker as Braithwaite, Kathy Joy as Nancy, Tiffany Merritt as Dr. Angela, Laura Morrison as Clementine, Aiden Ng as Marcus, Seven Jane as Pearl, Joseph Waters as Captain Joe, and Ryan Watt as Zed. Audio by Alan Spector, music by Joseph Waters, and writing by me, Laura Morrison. For more information on the show and the people behind it, go to fishclimbingtrees.com forward slash mantis forward slash. If you have some spare money lying around and need an idea what to do with it, we have a Patreon page. Patreon.com forward slash Space Mantis Podcast. We really do appreciate you listening. If you've come this far with us, thank you. You are amazing. Please subscribe to the Space Mantis Podcast. Like it and tattoo the link for this blog somewhere on your body so that the aliens that definitely didn't give you a brain parasite will know you're cool. Thank you, fellow Mandys. Over and out.